Hi guys, I'm Brandon Bartlett with Spirit of 76. Today we're gonna to start talking about our How to Sell Fireworks series. We're gonna go over a number of different topics to help you guys sell fireworks, from product placement to staffing to training to layout. And we're gonna to try to help you guys out as much as possible so that you sell as many fireworks as possible. Okay, the first topic I wanna to go over with you is sometimes overlooked, but it's very important as a retailer to make sure that you have good traffic flow outside of your tent. Make sure your entrance is clean, presentable, it has good curb appeal, but also make sure that it's wide enough for people to come in and out easily, and make sure you can handle the traffic that you're gonna get on the third and the fourth. Make sure your parking lot is well marked with signage and with banners and make sure that you keep the parking lot clear of your entrance and exit so you have good flow of customers coming in and out, that you don't have everything blocked up. People can get in and out easily and enjoy their experience. Next on the list is curb appeal. How to make your tent look appealing for the people driving on the road and make them wanna come in. You wanna have it very colorful. You wanna have something moving like a sky dancer or an inflatable. Flags are also very good a lot of color, and make sure you get your sales and your specials information out there. Um, another thing people forget is your credit card signs. Make sure you have your credit card signs up because those are very important, especially these days. Most everybody uses credit, so they wanna know that you take credit uh, in your tent. And if you don't take credit in your tent, I encourage you to take credit in your tent. If you're a cash-only tent, that will hurt your sales. For example, in our tent, I would say it's about 82% of sales are on credit. So if you don't do that or don't have the ability to do that, it's really worth the time to try to get that done. Okay, now that we're coming inside the tent, the very first thing I want to talk about is making sure you have a good, clean entrance for enough people to come through. It's not jammed up. It's very presentable and open. And it feels comfortable for everyone. The other thing is you want to be sure that you have your baskets for people to shop with. What we've also found now is that we've gone to some of these carts, and these carts are great because they roll really well on the surface, the outdoor surface, all the way out to the gravel to the cars. But the bigger vehicle you can give them to shop with, the more product they're gonna buy. So these yard baskets work great for us. You can do shopping carts, you can do all kinds of stuff, but I would encourage you to look at these yard carts. They're very good. All right, now let's talk about customer flow inside your tent or your retail space. Make sure you have wide aisles so that people can cross back and forth. You also need it for disabled people to come in in wheelchairs or walkers. You wanna to try to have as smooth a surface as you can. You don't wanna have anything out to take a trip on. But most importantly, you wanna have nice wide aisles so you have good flow. You wanna make sure you have all of your product that is accessible. Try to stay out of little corners or little nooks where it's difficult for people to come into. Um, as you can see, we do a lot of islands. The whole novelty table here is islands and our specials with our artillery shells. Make sure you have a lot of flow and make sure that when you start with your entrance all the way to your exit, with the flow you create, make sure that it forces them, your customers to go through the product to get to the exit. Don't just have it where they can go right from the entrance right to the exit if they just want to grab one item. You need to try to push them to go all the way through your product so that they see everything you have and that will increase sales. Now let's talk about price tags. Obviously price tags are very important. People need to know the price. But you can use price tags in a lot of different ways. So you can see our price tags here. We have the price nice and big where people can read it. it goes right with the product. But with Spirit of 76, when you buy products from us, you can also get these price tags free from us. It's a value-added service. It has the picture of the uh, product, but also the great thing is it has the description of the product so that customers can see it. it. Tells you how many shots are there. They can read it for themselves. Also, it's great for your employees. So when you have young kids working in a tent or older kids that aren't familiar with fireworks, it's a great way for them to be knowledgeable without having to spend a ton of time getting them up to speed with different products because that just takes time. So you, they can read right here and they can tell with confidence, they can tell the customer the correct information about what it does. It gives it a good clean look, the pictures are easy to line up, and these price tags are great both for your employees and for the customers. 
Okay, now let's talk about signage in your tent. It's very important to have your signage for your cashiers and for your entrance, for your exit, all that type of stuff. But it's also very important to have product categories. Very big signs where people can find what they're looking for. If they're looking for firecrackers or Roman candles or tubes, whatever it may be, your sales staff can help them but it's also very, very good to have them well marked so that people can go and find stuff on their own. And it also gives you an opportunity to add a lot of color and a cool theme, whatever your theme might be, uh, for your tent. As you can see, we're the presidents here at Spirit of 76, and this is a great way for us to help our customers with product category, but also brand our tent. Now let's talk about your cashier area and your registers. One of the biggest things you want to be able to handle is the rush. You do not want your customers having to wait in a long line for, you know, 20, 15, 20 minutes in line. We try to have our customers be able to be checked out. Even when it's very busiest in the 4th of July, we like to have them be able to be checked out in five minutes or less. And that's very busy. Usually we should be able to get them out in two minutes, even with the line. It all starts with the number of registers that you have and the flow that you have and then it ends with your POS system. Whatever type of register system you do, make sure that it is barcode usable. So you have a scanner, you don't have to type in product, make sure that you don't have to put uh, price tags on all of your products and then type them in manually. Try to have a scanner. These are becoming more and more affordable every year. We use the Clover system. It's fantastic. We're able to put our inventory into it. We can put all of our pricing into it ahead of time. We scan it, they can run credit cards. We can even turn it so that they can turn and sign with their fingers so you don't have to worry about a lot of paper and that type of stuff as far as receipts go. Clover is great for us, but there's a lot of good POS systems on the market. So after checkout, they're ready to pay their money, but we've started a rewards program simply to try to create repeat business. So if they'll give us their cell phone number to start their account, then when they come back, whatever deal you want to do, we do 10 cents on the dollar. When they come back, they'll be able to get that amount of money off of their next purchase. It also allows us to be able to contact them with specials with their email and that type of thing. And we found that people are very receptive to that and they like the rewards program because they're so used to other companies in their, you know, in their daily lives doing the same thing. The better your staff is, as you know, the more fireworks you're going to sell. And product knowledge is a big part of that. How do you get them trained and up to speed with different products and product knowledge? You have so many pieces throughout the tent, there's no way to go piece by piece. So one of the things that we always try to do here at Spirit is we try to get them to know the product categories. Artillery shells, 200 gram cakes, 350s, 500s, tubes missiles that type of stuff so at least they get an idea if they can get the product categories down first then they can start moving to effects of fireworks and different uh, particulars within the product categories they don't have to have all the knowledge just in their head with years and years of experience you can help them out with like the information we talked about on our price tags where it's got the description and it's got the picture and number of shots but now we also have our scan to device that we could use to literally scan a product and it will show them the firework. You just get to the barcode, scan the barcode, and then Sky Patriot comes up. It's got the picture, it's got the number of shots, you can even see where it shows the height and the spread, the measurements for your uh, firework. This is fantastic for your customers to see but it's even better to make sure that your employees are giving out proper information and it's just a great selling tool that will really help uh, your staff sell more fireworks. Let's talk about product placement. Right here we're on a finale table or a finale riser here. We've got a bunch of finale cakes. Galaxia, Swinato, Amazing Ballet, Jester's Revenge, and Rowdy Ride. Okay, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to product place these efficiently enough that they'll sell. So what we do is we kind of use a little bit of what we call here is a little guinea pig system. For example, Jester's Revenge on this table is kind of our guinea pig. He is priced at $325. The rest of these are all priced in the mid 100s to high 100s. So Jester's Revenge is almost double of a lot of these cakes, or is double. 
So by looking at Jester's Revenge price point of $325, it makes the other price points of these cakes in your mind seem smaller, which they are, and it seems more affordable. So when you're doing that type of thing, Jester's Revenge price point will help all these others sell. You're still trying to sell Jester's Revenge, and it will sell because it's a great cake, but you're also using it to help sell the others. It's the same effect over here in this next table here. So if you come over here, Sam's gonna come this way. These are just regular 500 gram cakes. We have one fan, but if you look at the pricing, 69, 64, 51, 55, 63, 54, 63, and then Bacon Blaster is $84. Bacon Blaster is a great cake. It has a great following. People come specifically into this tent for the Bacon Blaster. It will sell. But putting it with these other cakes at a higher price makes these other cake pricing look better to the mind and to the eye and will help promote these other cakes on this table um, and help them sell by using Bacon Blaster's price point is to kind of talk them into the smaller price point. I'm Brandon Bartlett with Spirit of 76. I hope the information that we provided you guys helps out. If you ever need anything else from us, don't hesitate to call or reach out to us online, 76fireworks.com. We'll see you soon.